Varroa destructor, the Varroa mite. What a kick in the nuts that's going to be when it turns up here. I know you guys overseas have been dealing with it for a while now, but here in Australia we've had it pretty lucky. The rest of the world's been dealing with the mite plague and we sort of have been insulated with the advantage of living on an island, I suppose. But about seven months ago, it was found in some hives in Newcastle, in New South Wales, which is a fair way south of where I am. Um, so I'm fortunate in that respect, but the New South Wales DPI, they think they're gonna control this thing, eradicate it, well, that's their attempts, but I mean, it's been here for a while now. They found it in, I think, 109 different sites. You know, so that's, that's gonna be an uphill battle to try and eradicate it from there. Other countries have tried before us and none have succeeded. Um, you know, I'm sure they're going to give it a red hot crack, but, you know, I think it's only a matter of time before the mite shows up here. So, I guess moving forward, I need some sort of a plan on how to deal with it when it turns up here. Now, Firstly, I'll apologise for my sweaty appearance today. It's mid 30 degrees Celsius here today, and if the humidity was any higher, I'd need gills. But I haven't been able to get in to these guys for a little while to see how they're going. And today is my only opportunity, so here I am. And this new split looks like it's trucking along all right, so we'll close them up and leave them. Um, for anybody that doesn't know what the Varroa mite is, it's a small parasitic mite that originated on a different species of honeybee, the Asian honeybee, or Apis serrana. And the Asian honeybee can handle it all right for a variety of different reasons, mainly to do with the reproduction of the mite. But they've made the crossover to the European honeybee, Apis mellifera, which is the one that we all keep. And the mite's doing really, really well to the point that they can wipe colonies out and they've been pretty devastating for the overseas bee industry. Um, and now we have it here in Australia. Now the fact that it's a, a blood sucking parasite basically is bad enough for the bees, but they also transmit a lot of viruses, um, which, is the, which is where a lot of the problems come in. There's just a whole heap of health issues that can be transmitted by this mite that we really don't need here. Um, but, you know, it's here, we've got to deal with it. Other countries have been working out how to deal with it. Let's move my cameras and I'll keep going. Everything's wet, so I'm having trouble keeping the smoke going. It's probably sweating just like I am. Yeah, so other countries have had a reasonable amount of time to sort of work out what they're going to do to combat this mite. Um, initially the main thing people were doing, or probably more commercial beekeepers, but it's spread into the hobbyist section as well, is there's all sorts of chemical treatments that you can do to um, control the mite. The problem is that bees are an insect. The mite's an insect. You're putting something deadly to insects in your hive, hoping that it'll kill the insects on the insects, but not harm your insects. It makes no sense to me. So I don't wanna go down that path. I mean, it's been reasonably successful, but over time, people are moving away from that a little, and I think that's probably a good thing. And I don't think that's a path that I want to go down. So I, um, I need a strategy. So what am I gonna do? Well, this here is the first part of my strategy for dealing with the mites, is to increase my hive numbers. Um, I started with one, I stayed with one for a while, I went to two. Now I've got four, soon I'll have six. I might get up to a dozen or so here. Um, the idea behind that is that it gives me a bit of a genetic pool 
to select bees from moving forward. And there's, there's evidence that um, some colonies can handle the mite better than others. Um, like any animal with a parasite, some are really susceptible, um, some can handle it all right. Bees are no different. If I've only got two or three colonies, well, I don't have much to choose from. If I can build those numbers up, I can then select from those colonies that do okay and spread that across my entire apiary, I suppose. Um, which then the second part of that is learning how to breed queens because you really need to be able to breed queens to be able to spread your genetics across the hive. So the second part of preparing for varroa mite, I guess, will be to um, learn how to breed queens. Um, and as soon as I've got my four colonies set up here, um, I'd like to get some nucleus boxes and I'm gonna to start to try and breed some queens and, and expand my apiary that way. And that'll give me a, another tool that moving forward I can use to try to cope with this bloody plague. You have built the most feral looking comb. These guys are going to need some major work in the next few weeks, separating all these combs and putting them onto standard laying bars somehow. But they are going really well. They've got a lot of brood. Yeah, they're really good. Starting to get a lot of bees too, which is good. This is the first one that's building. Nice straight comb onto a laying frame. So if I can keep them doing this on future frames, I'll eventually get the boxes built out how I want them. There's quite a bit of pollen on there, which is good. I'm actually doing all right now. Very good. Christ, there's some beetles in there. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's two parts of my strategy. Um, thirdly, I don't know that it's gonna make much difference, but I've already got two different hive styles here. And maybe try another couple and just compare. I don't believe hive style will have a lot to do with how they cope with um, varroa mite, but my thinking is that there may be a little difference. Um, these boxes have just got a flat board on the bottom. I mean, you can use a screened board to let things drop through. Um, my top bar hives have what they call an eco floor. So they've got a, a mesh bottom on a compartment that goes underneath the hive and then there's wood chips all in there. and it's sort of alive, you know, there's little critters living in there and you've probably seen spiders and stuff crawling all over those boxes. The whole thing's sort of alive with a heap of different critters. And my thinking is maybe if the bees can shed some of those parasites, they'll end up on the bottom and they'll be consumed by earwigs or spiders or whatever. May help, I don't know. But that's something that I can look at going forward, different hive styles, see if it makes a difference. Um, and probably lastly will be swarm traps. Um, I'd like to try and get some swarm traps up and maybe try and trap some wild bees because um, the thinking so far from overseas, like people that have been dealing this, with this for longer than anybody here, is that your wild colonies can generally handle the mite okay. Um, because if they don't, they die. Um, the colony dies out. If they can handle the mite, they survive, they reproduce more wild colonies that can handle the mites. It's a natural selection thing. Um, and even worldwide, you know, there is a bit of a move towards that natural selection um, idea to try and handle the mites because what it seems to be, we seem to be finding when we, when we use a poison and try and kill the mite, we don't kill all the mites. So we're tending to kill the weaker mites, the stronger mites survive. And over time, your mites just get stronger and stronger and it eventually overwhelms your bees anyway. So. Um, natural selection to try and get bees that can handle the mites seems to be the way to go at the moment and that's the way I'm going to go. Um, yeah, fingers crossed they can get it under control but like I said, 109 sites with bees infected with mites. You know, they only need to miss one wild colony that's infected and the whole process will start again. So I really think they're pushing shit uphill to try and eradicate this thing and like I said, no other country's been able to do it. So, um, look, Good on them for giving it a red hot go, but, and you know, you gotta, you gotta, you can't just lay down and, and, and let it in, but 
um, yeah, I I think we're I think we're in for a bit of heartache over the next few years as it as it spreads through the country. But um, at the very least, what they're doing will slow it down and stop it from getting into Queensland quite so fast. So, you know, I might be right for a little while yet. I'll have a, a few years to to work out what I'm doing. But yeah. Not looking forward to it, not looking forward to it. I think it's gonna suck a lot of the fun out of beekeeping, seeing that little fella up here, but anyway, it is what it is. The rest of the world gets by, you know, so we'll find a way. Anyway, that's my plan for dealing with the varroa mite, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. You can bugger off wherever the fuck you are.